Mount Calvary Had it not been for the old rugged cross Had it not been for a man called Jesus Then forever my soul would be lost. It's only been 15 years probably since I sung it. But I'm so glad he was willing to drink the bitter cup. Although he simply prayed, let it pass from me. Oh, but I'm so glad that he never called heaven's angels and say, pull these nails from my hands that really torment me. But you know, he had so much love, had so much compassion for you and me that he was able to look ahead in time and he simply said, I will stay the course and I'll finish my race so that those that's coming after me can walk in victory, can walk in a place of peace and a place of rest. And this morning, you and I are overcomers simply because we have a testimony that his blood still is flowing and that it's never lost its power, it's never lost its ability, and I don't know what the enemy may have told you this week, uh, but there is still power in the blood of Jesus. Can I tell you this morning that it doesn't matter what you have need of today, he is still able to do what you have need of this morning. And it's simply because he said, I will go to Calvary and I will bear an old rugged cross uh, and I will even give myself uh, so that you can have life uh, and have it more abundantly. Somebody ought to give him praise right now because if it had not been, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be today? But because of the cross, because of a place called Calvary, this morning I can stand with a shout of victory and say, you know what? Uh, every time the enemy showed up, uh, God has showed up uh, and I will not be denied in this season of my life uh, because he is still walking with me, uh, walking beside me. He's still protecting and he's still providing this morning. Give him a shout of praise for that this morning if you can testify to that today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Melissa, for making me sound better than I am this morning. Can't talk a little long sing, but when it burns in your heart, you just got to do it sometimes. Amen. I'm so thankful today that he is still, still our source this morning. Amen. Those of you going to class, feel free to do so this time and we're going to get into the word this morning and uh, we are going to uh, go on a journey together the Lord would help us pray for us this morning that our voice will, will last a little while longer if you would please but uh, as we're getting ready to go to the word and those going to class this morning I'm going to I'm going to ask you to uh, also remember uh, Pastor Jade and his family, uh, we did not mention it, some of you may not know, but uh, Pastor Jade's grandfather uh, stepped into heaven Friday morning, uh, was not expecting that, he'd been a little sick, but, uh, but Thursday they took him to the hospital, let him come back home at about 7 o'clock Friday, uh, Friday morning, uh, our dear brother the Lord uh, finished his race here and stepped into eternity there and to forever be with the Lord and uh, all the sights that he's seen today oh what he's encountering today oh isn't our future bright if we just finish well and uh, and uh, Jade's papa he finished well and uh, we're so honored to uh, 
have been able to meet them and, and spend some time with them. But uh, that, that memorial service will be uh, tomorrow morning, uh, 11 o'clock in Camden, Ohio. So be praying for the family if you would. Uh, I know they greatly appreciate it uh, this morning. So uh, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, 1 Kings chapter number 21. I want to give you the first four verses of this, of this familiar passage. I've preached from this passage multiple times over the years. And, uh, but as I was studying, I'm going to take us several places this morning. But if the Lord would help me, I want to be an encouragement to you today. I, um, uh, we hear enough bad, we hear enough negative, and, and you know, our nation as well as the nations of the world is in a place of just complete upheaval and uh, lots of uncertainty and all those things. But there is some things that are certain. Not everything is unstable. Not everything is doom and gloom. Uh, but when we live in this world, even though we're not of this world, we live in this world, the news of this world sometimes has an impact on us, and especially when you have an adversary that is continually trying to plot your demise, and he's trying to attack you and your family and everything that you're about. Uh, but there is some things this morning that we can stand with confidence and know uh, that God is uh, still who he says he is today. So if the Lord would help me for a few moments, I want to talk to you today about a priceless inheritance. A priceless inheritance. How many knows you got something special today? I mean, you really know you got something special. Now, husbands, I'm not talking about your wife sitting beside you. I know she's special, but I'm talking about even something more special than that. Oh, did I say that backwards, Steve? Yeah, okay. Ladies, I know you have husbands that's beside you that's special. There, that, I'll do that one for Steve. That makes them feel better. And, uh, but uh, how many knows that I'm talking about something even more special? than that, and that is Jesus Christ this morning. But when we go through the hustle and bustle of life, sometimes the things that are near and dear to us gets neglected. Not that we mean to, but it just we kind of loses sight of really the importance of it. So I'm going to try to just bring us back to a place of remembrance for a few moments this morning. But let us go to this very familiar story and 1 Kings chapter 21, and it says, And it come to pass after these things that Naboth uh, he had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, and it was by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab spoke to Naboth, and he was saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard, or if it seems good to you, I will give you the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto you. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For notice he said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. I want to preach this morning on a priceless inheritance. 1 Peter chapter number 1, verses 3 through 5, we read these words. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Y'all missed a good place to shout right there. Hear me today. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away. Somebody say forever. Reserved in heaven for you. Now, the Bible has a lot to say about inheritance and vineyards. We know that the word inheritance is found a little over 200 times and vineyards is found a little over 100 times. 
And when something is mentioned that many times in Scripture, you know it's probably pretty important. And in recent years, we have seen so many changes within the church world. While we have enjoyed a season of, of great wealth and material increases, we have seen a decline of passion as well as a decline of spiritual things, if we're not careful. I see currently a generation of people within the body of Christ that does not know the value of what they have really inherited. Because of the lack of knowledge they have concerning their inheritance, please hear me, there are many that are willingly selling it off because they fail to see the value of it. Naboth, when he was approached by Achan, he made this claim. The Lord forbid it me to give you my inheritance. He understood the value of what he possessed. He went on to simply say in a very commanding manner, I will not give you my inheritance. Not only did he understand what he had, but he had a passion for that which had been given to him. Today, if you and I are going to ever really fulfill the task that's in front of us, we're first going to have to understand what has been given to us. And just like Naboth inherited a natural vineyard, you and I have been given a spiritual vineyard, and our Heavenly Father, He has planted it and cared for it throughout generations. But now it has been entrusted with you and I. This vineyard produces fruit, and it cannot be replaced by anything this world has to offer. We know according to John 15, if you was to read that familiar passage of Scripture, we find that Jesus says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Notice, Jesus Christ, when he birthed forth from the grave, was the emerging of the vines of this vineyard. And when he, the Holy Spirit, descended, the fruit of the Spirit was found ready for those who had been given access to this vineyard. However, this morning, let me remind you that the spirit of Ahab is very much alive and in this current hour and is desiring to take away everything that the Father has given you. But not only is there a spirit of Ahab, but let me remind you that there is always someone that tries to assist Ahab in what his desires is, and that is Jezebel. Can I tell you this morning, Jezebel has always been in alignment with Ahab, and Jezebel is still in alignment with that same spirit today. This demonic spirit is presenting himself, however, in a harmless manner, offering an alternative vineyard for the men and women of faith. But I want you to hear me today. There is nothing greater and there is nothing equal to what you have in Jesus Christ. If it does not line up with the word of God, you need to get out of line with it because it's not something you need in your life. Yet there is nothing this morning that you and I need to understand other than this, that he is still our source and he is still our strength. Notice, yet there is nothing greater in this vineyard which the Father has given to us through his Son because in what we have received in Christ, there is everlasting life, there is deliverance, and there is freedom. And that's just a couple of things the truth is our only vineyard, our vineyard is the only vineyard that can produce the fruit of the Spirit where men's life are able to be transformed and changed. Notice Jesus Christ is still the way, the truth, and the life. He's not one way of many ways, but he is the way. When I see the condition today of many believers, it is evident that they have begun to sell off their inheritance because of the lack of understanding, knowing just how valuable it is. Notice Ahab, he wanted to destroy Naboth's vineyard, and he wanted to make it a herb garden. That doesn't make much sense to me, other than the fact that Naboth was in a place where there was no joy, 
No fulfillment, no peace, and there was lack, and there was uncertainties in his life. And he thought, I need something to bring things fulfillment. Listen, herbs are things that bring healing. And he said, i got to bring something. i got to build something where there can be some voids filled in my life. He did not realize that, you know what, when you're walking in a state of wholeness, when you're walking in a state where you're possessing the inheritance of your father, you're not walking in a sickened state, a stricken state, but you're walking in a state where you're whole. Notice, it is evident that Ahab was in need of healing of some sort when he was not able to enjoy even the fruits of the vineyard that Naboth had. How many people today is so overwhelmed by sickness and disease that they fail to understand there's something more than what they currently have? Just asking. The only cure for that which is plaguing the church today across the globe is still Jesus Christ. Listen, this morning we need to understand that in him there is still fullness. In him is still joy. In him is still a peace uh, that passes all understanding. You say, why is that really important this morning? Notice with me. As men and women of faith, we can simply stand, not from a third-party sense, uh, but from a, a, a place of being intimate with him, and we can make this statement. My inheritance that I have received from my Father in heaven, it is an inheritance of redemption. It is an inheritance of deliverance. It is an inheritance of health. It is an inheritance of joy. It is an inheritance of peace and rest, of everlasting life, and a promise of heaven to come. That is my inheritance. But the enemy comes, and he always wants to sow seeds of doubt, and he simply begins to tell us things like this. You're broken. You're, 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 you're in a place where you're separated. You're in a place where you're diseased. You're full of sorrow. He tells you that you're helpless and hopeless. He tells you that everything is over. But when you begin to dig deep and you begin to look inside of you, you begin to find, and when you, and you quiet yourself, oftentimes you'll simply hear that still small voice simply say this. When you hear the enemy say, you're broken, that little small voice simply says, no, you're healed. That, that voice comes back and says, you're separated. And he says, no, I am near. That voice comes and says, you're diseased. And he says, oh, no, you're delivered. That voice comes again and says, oh, it, it's just a life full of sorrow. And he says, no, there's joy unspeakable and full of glory. You see, when, when he says, oh, it's a helpless situation, it's hopeless, uh, there's no reason to go back to the house of God. There's no reason to go back to the Word. There, 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 there's no reason to go back to the prayer closet. And he simply says, let me remind you, I'm ever present in your time of trouble. When the enemy says, oh, it's over, I've got you right where I want you, he simply says, I make all things new. Paul understood what it was to make sure that you kept your focus. And, and Naboth paints a very clear picture of what it is. He says, he says, the Lord forbid me to sell off what I have received of my father's. And he says, I will not give you that which is mine. He understood. But then we find that when you go to New Testament scripture, Paul, in chapter 4 of 1 Timothy, Verse number 1, 7, and verses 12 through 16. I want to give them to you this morning. He says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. Verse 7, But refuse profane and old wife fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. And he's speaking to Timothy. He's in verse number 12. He says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and in purity. He said, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. But notice verse 14. He says, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by the prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine continue in them. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Notice in verse 14 he says, neglect, neglect not the gift that is in you. Paul was telling Timothy, he said, Timothy, don't ever forget the inheritance that's inside of you. But if you back up in, or if you go forward rather into 2 Timothy chapter number 1, verse 2 through 9, notice to Timothy... My dearly beloved son, 
grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of you in my prayers night and day. He said, I'm greatly desiring to see you and I've been mindful of your tears but he said that I might be filled with joy. He said, when I call to remembrance the unfrenched faith that was in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that is in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and has called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Now, if you want to go to Hebrews chapter 2, I know it's lots of scripture this morning, but stay with me, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Now, what are you saying this morning? I watched a little interview this week of an 11-year-old boy. He is a little preaching machine. And he's been interviewed by these adults. And, you know, he's this little 11-year-old African boy and he's on this set and they're asking him how are you able to minister how do you know so much at the age of 11 and he was sitting there and every question they asked he was responding with an answer from the word of the Lord and finally they said are you ever intimidated they said do you do altar calls oh yes I do altar calls they said, do you pray for people? Yes, I pray for people. And they said, are you ever intimidated by it? He said, oh, no. And they was kind of confused. And he leaned back in his chair and he had his little, he was dressed, buddy. He was, he was dressed. He grabs his jacket like this. He says, when people see me, they may see a child. And he says, I am a child. But that which is in me is not a child. And I thought, that preach, at 11 years old, a young boy realized that something inside of him was of great value and of great power. And he said, I will not let anyone intimidate me and to steal what God has given me. I wish some adults would understand that this morning because I want you to hear me today. The enemy is telling some of you that you're broken. But you need to understand that through the saving blood of Jesus Christ, you're not broken. But you have been born again in the likeness and the image of God. And you are not just touched, but you have been healed, delivered, and set free. Some of you still hear the enemy say, oh, you're separated from the goodness of God and the grace of God and the mercies of God. But notice uh, in the word of the Lord, his grace and his mercy is new every day. Uh, some of you still walking around with the mindset, oh, I'm diseased and I'm this and I'm that. Uh, but can I tell you, uh, you are a child of the Most High God uh, and there is royal blood that's flowing through your veins. Uh, and this morning, uh, you got to get out of that mindset and know uh, what old Claude Ely used to sing, I am a child uh, of the King. Uh, not just any King, uh, but the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Uh, and of this King Kingdom, there is no end uh, of this kingdom uh, it is a place where there is life and liberty for all that will come the enemy says all oh, but 
but life is so hard and, and, and it's full of trouble and it's full of sorrow. But listen, uh, no matter where we find ourselves, David said, I've come to understand uh, that the one that I call uh, shepherd, uh, the one that I call master, uh, he said he's such a good shepherd uh, that even when I go through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, he said I will fear no evil. Uh, he said because uh, he takes care of me uh, and even when I'm in the presence of my enemy, uh, he prepares a table for me. Uh, he says because uh, he said in him is something that trumps everything else uh, that comes my way. Uh, this morning uh, the enemy wants you to think that you're helpless and hopeless uh, but can I tell you uh, if you look beside you this morning uh, he's there. Uh, if you look behind you this morning uh, he's there. Uh, if you look on the other side of you he's there. Uh, and even if you look ahead uh, he's already going before you. Uh, and this morning uh, the inheritance that you have uh, as a blood bought saint of God uh, is something that's worth hanging on to. The enemy's trying to steal it from you continually. But this morning, uh, can I remind you what the psalmist says in 34 and 8? Uh, oh, taste and see uh, that the Lord is good uh, and blessed is the man that trusts in him. When was the last time you tasted of your inheritance? You see, the world will give you lots of things that taste good, but it's not good for you. Listen, I know some of you, 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 you couldn't wait till yesterday morning got here. I understand that. I, I, I live with one of those people. Okay? But at 2 o'clock this morning, it was, oh, yeah. Too many Dr. Peppers, too much dirt cake, too much everything else they ate that was junk yesterday. He said, I'm not doing that tomorrow. See, it looked good. It sounded good. It even tasted good, but it wasn't nothing good. Listen, the enemy's putting all those things out in front of us in our lives, saying, oh, this is, this is what you really need, and this is what you really need. And if you're not careful, we begin to sell off the inheritance because we begin to walk away from what God has put on his table and we begin to eat off of another table and therefore we begin to walk in a manner where our lives are full. And we say, I don't, I don't have a desire for this. I don't have a passion for that. And the thing is, you're full, but you're walking around in a full stricken state when God says, listen, I've got stuff over here that's full of life, that's full of joy, that's full of peace, that's full of everything you need, but you continue to partake of this. Uh, and what you didn't realize is you've been selling off this inheritance and he's been giving you something just like Ahab told Naboth. He said, I can give you something of equal value or I can give you its worth in money and the thing is, but, but Nabal said, I refuse. I wish somebody would stand and refuse this morning because the enemy comes along and says, well, you're not spiritual enough or you're not polished enough or you're not this enough or you're not that enough. And listen, can I tell you that he is no respect of person, but he says to all that will come, he will extend his hand to. Listen, our inheritance is not just for here, but it is for eternity. You see, when I began to understand that the vineyard that has been given to me, that's been passed down from generation to generation. Listen, it is a generational thing that, that needs to be focused on and begins to need to be celebrated because the kingdom of God has not lost its power, it's not lost its ability, but there is still redemption, there's still deliverance, there's still healing, there's still eternal life, there's still joy, there's still rest, and there's still peace. And you say, but, but we don't get excited about that much anymore. No, we don't because we don't understand that, that the thing is everything around here the enemy's given you is just temporal and it's full of death. But when you start really understanding what you have, what you have, I'm not talking about what anybody else has, but do you really know what you have in Jesus this morning? Because see, if you, if you would pause and reflect back on the old song this morning, had it not been 
for a place called Calvary. Had it not been for an old rugged cross, and had it not been for a man named Jesus, where would you be today? You'd be lost, you'd be separated, you'd be broken. If the enemy had his way, many of us in this room would already be in eternity in a place called hell. I know we don't talk about it much in our culture today, but can I tell you, hell is real. And it is burning as hot as it ever has. And it's enlarging itself daily. And you and I need to understand that that is what the enemy desires for every human being. But there was a way of escape that was made through the old rugged cross at Calvary and through the shed blood of Jesus. And he says, that which my father has given me, I give to you. What did you get in that transfer? Not only did we get joy and peace and rest, redemption and deliverance, but there's something even greater than that. We also was given authority. Now I want you to let that sink in this morning. There was a time in the life of Christ Jesus asked this question to his disciples. Who do men say that I am? Some said, well, you're this or you're this or you're this. But then Peter spoke up and he said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Anybody remember the response that Jesus gave? The response was, flesh did not reveal this to you. But there is revelation that came to you because of what you are walking with and what you're with right now. And he says, upon that rock I will build my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. And he said, by the way, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. This morning, can I remind you that in your inheritance, in your vineyard this morning, there is a set of keys that has been placed in that vineyard. And this morning, as men and women of God, you have the ability to bind and loose things, to lock and unlock things. And there's some things that needs to be locked out of your life, but there's some things that needs to be unlocked in your life too because I'm here to tell you that God still is a God that's moving and touching hearts of men and women, and he desires to touch you today. But do you understand the value of your inheritance? When we begin to look at Scripture, I have to take us to Revelation 21 just for a moment because John was on the Isle of Patmos and he got in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And the Lord says, I want you to write a few things down. And when you get over to chapter 21, beginning in verse number 1 through verse number 5, notice he says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he dwells with them. And they shall be my they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor cry, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. This morning, can I tell you, you and I do not just have an inheritance to get us through this day or this week or this month or this year. But when you and I continue to walk uh, with him and continue to allow him to lead us and guide us and direct us on a daily basis and we willingly pick up our cross and follow him daily, you and I have to understand, have to understand this, that our future is a future uh, that we can get excited about. And Nabal, he understood in chapter 21 of 1 Kings, he said, it does not matter what comes my way. 
but I have been given something that I am just a steward over. I'm not even really the owner of it uh, because it is my responsibility to pass it down to the next generation just like my father and his father had done. And he says, I can't sell you what, what's not rightfully mine. Uh, he said, I've just been entrusted with it. Uh, he said, the law prohibits me uh, to give anything uh, like this to you. And he said, I will not do it. Uh, whatever you want to try to do to me is fine. Uh, but notice with me, that decision cost Ahab his life. We don't talk too much about that, but you read the whole passage, uh, we find that Jezebel, uh, she walked in and saw uh, King Ahab in a distraught state, and she said, aren't you the king? Uh, or aren't you the one in authority? Uh, she said, let me take care of this. And she began to write letters uh, and put the king's seal on it. Uh, and she began to get false accusers uh, to, to go in and speak against Naboth as they put him amongst the people. Uh, and they took him out and slayed him. Uh, but then uh, Jezebel comes into Ahab and says, uh, listen, uh, Naboth's dead. Go down there and get the vineyard that you want. Uh, he thought everything's good and grand. Uh, and the enemy thought that for some time. And I heard the Lord say in my spirit in recent days, uh, he said, listen, uh, Ahab uh, has been on his path uh, and he's trying to take what's been God's people. Uh, and he said, listen, uh, I'm sending a prophetic move. Uh, and there is getting ready to be a, a confrontation in the spirit realm. Uh, you hear me this morning, uh, uh, and I want you to get this in your spirit. Uh, as, as Naboth began to walk down, uh, the prophet begins to walk, and the Lord says, I want you to go tell him. Uh, I know exactly what he did. Uh, I know exactly what just happened. Uh, and the same thing that happened to him is going to happen to you, uh, and there's not going to be a man that ever reached maturity in your family. Uh, and by the way, uh, also Jezebel's going to experience some dogs licking her blood. Uh, he said, I'm getting ready to bring a divine reversal at my appointed time. Uh, and I want you to hear me today uh, because Nabal said my vineyard's not for sale. Uh, I won't give it to anybody. Uh, the Lord began to move on his, on his behalf uh, and we find uh, that there began to complete a complete obliteration of the enemy. Uh, I want to tell somebody this morning uh, what we have is worth fighting for. Uh, what we have is worth dying for. Uh, and I'm going to tell you this morning uh, when you and I become willing to die to self, uh, God begins to remove uh, on our behalf uh, and there begins to be an, a, a confrontation uh, and it's not one that we have to fight or worry about uh, but there's a prophetic anointing. Uh, please hear me this morning. Uh, there is a prophetic anointing that's coming to this nation this year uh, that's going to cause Ahab and Jezebel uh, to experience death uh, and there is going to begin to be a liberating power uh, of the Holy Spirit of God uh, because there's some people that said uh, I'm not for sale uh, this morning uh, I don't know about you uh, but today uh, is the day uh, that we got to make up our mind uh, and say you know what uh, God is good uh, he is gracious uh, he is faithful uh, he is my ever present help uh, he is my strength uh, he is my deliverer uh, he is my king uh, he is my lily in the valley uh, he is my bright and morning star uh, he he is the rose of Sharon in my life. Uh, can I tell you today, uh, you have something with him uh, that man did not give you. Uh, you have something that cannot be substituted uh, or replaced by another uh, because in him uh, there is still victory. Uh, in him uh, is still joy. Uh, in him is still healing and deliverance. Uh, in him is still salvation. Uh, in him is still the presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, in him uh, is still a song. Uh, in him is still a dance in him is still a shout of praise in him is still a future some of you need to shake it off and say I'm going to go with God I'm going to let everything else fall by the wayside and I'm going to be what he says I can be because you have a priceless inheritance this morning while we're sitting in a world that's going crazy there is a king that's sitting on the throne in heaven that says, just finish well. Stay the course. Don't be weary. He said, I never leave you, never forsake you, but I'll be with you. Some of you thought you'd been by yourself. 
But you just need to look down inside and you need to do what Paul told Timothy to do. He said, listen, Timothy, I see your tears. But he said, I, I, I can't help but begin to get, get joyful because he said, I remember something. I remember a day. I remember a day when I laid my hands on you and something entered into your life. And he said, there was some, there was some faith in your family line that has not been sold off. And he said, there, there's, there's some faith that, that, that Grandma Lois had and, and that Mama Eunice had. But he said, I, I am persuaded that it's presently in you. He said, he's, what he was saying is this, there's an inheritance that has not been sold off. And I understand that it gets hard and it gets difficult. To get, uh, but he said, listen, for God didn't give you that spirit of fear and he did not give you anything uh, other than of love and power and of a sound mind. And he said, I want you to reach way down deep uh, and I want you to stir up what God's given you. He said, because notice, uh, I want you to realize it is by the power of God that we're able to do and be what we're supposed to be. Some of you this morning, you need to, you need to not neglect the gift that's in you. Because Paul said to Timothy, don't you dare neglect what's in you. Some of you forget what's in you. Listen, can I remind you what's in you this morning as I bring this to a close? It, what's in you is more than a prayer. What's in you is more than just, a, just an encounter. But in you this morning. Right now where you're sitting in you is the kingdom of God. Think about it. Inside of you this morning, right now, inside of you is the king of glory. Inside of you right now is the Holy Spirit of God. In you right now is enough power you have faith in you right now is enough faith for you to look at that mountain in your life and say in the name of Jesus be removed and it has to move hear me today the enemy wants to keep you so troubled keeps you so distracted to focus on all of the stuff that you don't see naturally but if you would look in the spirit and look and see what's in you you could say what the Shumanite woman said that we preached on just a few days ago. It is well. This morning, are you able to simply say it is well? See, a lot of people can't say that this morning, even though they're in the house of the Lord, because all week they've sold off their inheritance. They have just gave it away. They just... Didn't see the value of it. This morning, you and I have to understand what this little 11 year old boy understood. He said, You may just see me as a child, and I am. You may look in the mirror and say, Well, I just, I just see broken. I just, see lack, I just see inability or, and, and, and maybe you can justify whatever you say about yourself but I just want you to understand that inside of you it's not broken it's not in a state of weakness but what's inside of you is full of power if you have made Jesus Christ Lord of your life just like that little boy said he said, that which is in me is not of a child. What he was simply saying is this. What's in me is fully developed, fully positioned in power and authority. And no matter what I encounter, I am able to rely upon it and not this. Quit relying on this fleshly thing that's just temporal and that's going to fade away and begin to rely on what's inside of you this morning and we need to remember this morning that we are we are men and women today that 
God has for such a time as this allowed to be present on this planet. To be his hands and his feet. To be stewards of the vineyard. And we got to make a decision. Either we're going to sell it off. Or we're going to keep it and pass it on to the next generation. With it hanging full of fruit. Giving life to others. As they come to the piano this morning. I want to take just a moment and I want us to be sensitive for a moment because it's not about yesterday, it's not about 30 days ago, it's not about three years ago. You can say, well, I, I've encountered him at times past or I've I understand what you're saying this morning that, that he's our source and all these things but what about today? What are you eating from today? What are you focusing in on today? It's not about what anybody else is doing but this morning can you really truly say that I understand just how precious the gift is that's been given to me. Oh, I think all of us is guilty at times of forsaking that thing that is so precious to us. But God help us in this season. You say, is it really that important, Pastor? Yes, it is this morning because if you look around you today, there's a world that's dying, that's full of hopelessness, and they're bound by addictions and strongholds of all sorts. There's no peace that can be found in many families, many individuals' lives. They come to houses of worship like this, if they're not careful, they see just more of the same. They don't see that radiant light of the gospel they don't see that joy they don't see that smile they don't see that peace so they leave the doors of building such as this just to continue on the path that they currently are and the enemy has taken many vineyards and simply turned them into herb gardens many platforms in America Instead of giving the word of truth this morning or doing nothing more than offering intellectual solutions just to try to get through something instead of getting delivered from it. But there has to be a calling back. There has to be a remembering. There has to be a stirring this morning within the hearts of men and women of God to understand that what we have is not normal. What we have is not of this world. But what we have is of supernatural strength and ability and power. And it's able to bring about a deliverance to one that's in the darkest place this morning. What we have today is able to bring the one that is full of hopelessness to a place of divine deliverance. Let me give you an example this morning. On more than one occasion throughout my life, I've seen an old drunker stagger into the back of the sanctuary, wasn't able to even talk, wasn't even able to walk straight. But they began to sing the songs of Zion, or the preacher began to preach. And they'd stagger down the aisle in such a manner that as they passed by, you could smell the nightclub that they just left was still lingering on them. And I've watched them fall down and begin to cry and weep. And a few moments later, stand and be sober and be able to speak clearly. I've experienced them going through a rebirthing process where they begin to walk in a place of complete deliverance and do some wonderful things for God. I've seen men and women 
walk sick and diseased. But when the church began to lay their hands on them and pray the prayer of faith, anointing them with oil, I've seen them delivered and set free. See, what we have is something that is full of power. I seen even this morning, Sister Vonda gave a little update from last weekend where she ministered in Kentucky. It was a man that his lungs was full of tumors. As she began to pray with the others, she just heard the Lord in her spirit say, just pray the fire of God to enter into his body. He got a report back yesterday that every tumor that was in his lungs is gone. Why? It's because of the inheritance. It's not of this world. Can I tell you this morning? The mind, the heart, the spirit of man can never be made whole. It can never be at peace. It can never be at rest unless it partakes of what's in the vineyard of our Father. You can try everything this world offers, but you'll still be miserable, lost, and full of voids. The world will put all of their stuff in flashing light to make you think, that's what I need. That'll satisfy me. You'll wake up the next morning, you'll be embarrassed, full of shame, full of uncertainty, and say, why did I do that? Because that's just how the enemy is. But when you partake of what the Father has, and what he has allowed us to be partakers of and stewards of, when we begin to just simply partake of that, there is no shame. But there just begins to be the fullness begins to be the peace and the rest that comes. As we stand all over this house this morning, I don't stand here in a place of judgment this morning, but I stand here telling you this this morning, that God loves you. And it doesn't matter how many times we've fallen, it doesn't matter how many times we've made a mistake, doesn't matter how many times that we've walked away. God's allowed you to be here this morning to hear this pastor speak a very simple message into your hearing today and tell you that there is an inheritance. There is an inheritance that God has given us through the shed blood of the cross of Calvary. And in this inheritance... There is everything that you have need of today. But you have to be willing to come. He says, come and eat of me. He says, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. He simply says that if you ask, you'll receive. He says, lay it at my feet he said I'll take care of it not only will I take care of it but I'll I'll renew you and I'll breathe life into you this morning and maybe you need that breath of life today maybe you just need to sense that love loving arm of Christ put around you today Maybe the enemy's put all types of things in front of you in recent days and said, this is what you need and this is what you need. and Just give me that and I'll give you this. And but today, this is still the word of life. This is what we have to eat of. So this morning, so we're just kind of still in the presence of the Lord. Every eye closed just for a moment. If that little, still, small voice this morning is speaking to you, and you'd be honest before God this morning and say, you know what, I've, I'm guilty. 
I've sold off some of my inheritance. I've walked away from some of the things that, that, that I know I shouldn't have. I've, I've not, really, not really been all in this morning. Can I tell you, God's not here to judge you this morning, but he's still simply just saying right now, come. We used to sing an old little chorus that said, come home, come home. Simply said, coming home. Never more to roam. Right now, he just wants you to come home. He said, I just want you to come back and begin to eat of the inheritance that I have given you. So right now, if the Spirit of God is, I'm not, I'm not questioning your salvation this morning. That's not what I'm doing. I'm just saying, that have you allowed things into your life that you know that God's not pleased with and God's not happy with today? It's time to remove those things and just say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rededicate. I'm going to recommit my life. I'm going to just simply call out to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me. And Lord, I, I'm, going to, I'm not going to sell off my inheritance, but I'm going to stand firm and I'm going to fight for it. I'm going to, I'm going to care for it. I'm going to pass it to the next generation. I'm going to ask you to step out of your seat right now and come and join me in the front of this building. Right now. God bless you this morning. God loves you this morning. 